Like I said, they need wide open, you know, they prefer wide open prey, which is where you see most of them. So if you do put up a castrol box, um, put it on a pole, like, you know, like a big four by four type pole and put it at least, at least 10 feet up is preferable because you don't want somebody to be able to get into the box or um, be encouraged to get in the box and you don't want predators. Put Aylin up, my battery died, so I just took the opportunity to go ahead and put her put her up because she's getting too fussy. So what were we talking about? Um, kestrel boxes. So if you do decide to put up a kestrel box, uh, 10 feet minimum, of course you have to check it so you don't want it to be so tall you can't reach it. Um, and I do have some information on our website about putting up a kestrel box. So, and it's a, it's a, it's a good thing to do um, if you have the habitat. If you don't have the habitat and let's say you put it up in the woods, you'll get a screech owl instead. Or something else, maybe a, uh, a flicker, a woodpecker. Bluebirds are known to um, nest in them, or who knows what else. But um, yeah, there's been a decline in American kestrels in North America. If you averaged it out, it runs about almost 50% in a decline. Uh, some areas of North American I almost just got hit by a pine cone. Um, some areas of the country are experiencing more uh, uh, more significant declines, New England being one of them. They have experienced a decline as high as 88%. Here in the Colorado Plateau, originally I saw the numbers were like 65-ish percent. Um, and then I saw another uh, article or document or data. I can't remember where I saw it. It was on the Kestrel Partnership website. Um, that here in the Colorado Plateau, it's only like 51 or 57 percent. So I don't know if that's been an updated number because I certainly didn't make up the number 66 percent. So I'm not quite sure where I got that. But that was the original the percentage that I remember. But however, it's still 51, 57, however many. That's 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 a lot. And what's uh, particularly interesting about the kestrels in northern Arizona is there's not a lot known about their nesting phenology and their um, nesting ecology and even some of their natural history behavior. Um, I remember, well, in 2017, we started putting up boxes. In 2017, in northern Arizona, there were no, no kestrel boxes. And we put up the first three in the area. And then after that, um, through 2019-ish, uh, we did a huge campaign and outreach uh, with Arizona Game and Fish as well, um, pushing to get boxes out. Now they're everywhere. Uh, Northern Arizona is covered in kestrel boxes, which is a good thing. And so now with the data coming in, so what you do is you put up, it's with the, the Peregrin Fund started the American Kestrel Nest Box Partnership in 2012 when they discovered that the numbers have been declining. Um, so they, and here's the real kicker is they don't know why. They don't know what's causing the birds to um, not do well. And so what they did is they wanted to start putting up boxes and so they can start getting data and maybe they can kind of pinpoint what is the reason why these birds aren't doing well and why are they doing okay in some spots. There are some areas, um, one of them is like southern Texas, I believe, and then the southeast, somewhere in the southeast, they're doing, they're actually um, increasing in numbers. So, but why? Why are they doing well? Maybe the it's warm and humid and wet. Maybe it's the insect population is up or um, who knows why. And so the, the Peregrine Fund wanted to find out. So they really did a push for citizen science to get average people that aren't scientists to contribute to science. So hence the name citizen science. So if you put up a box and you submit the data, so you go in on their website and they have a, a dashboard and a, a whole platform with a ton of information and you plug in your data and they take, they pull that data and then that's what they do their um, analysis with. Uh, so if you looked on there, like say even just two years ago, there were no boxes and now there's a lot of boxes up there, which is a good thing. So all that data is good. Now, if you do put up a box and you don't get 
um, a pair of nesting in there, you know, that's still okay. Uh, you still submit your data because no data is still data. So if they're not there, they want to know why they're not there. Why are they not there? Is it because of this, 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 or this? So I believe the last time I checked, what they're really focusing on is, do they do better in the urban environment or do they do better in a more um, rural in environment? And if they're not doing well in the um, urban environment, is that because of insecticide or a higher, um, you know, higher, uh, prevalence of rodenticides, you know, because cities usually like to get rid of their rodent rod, uh, rodent problems. But I will little disclaimer here or uh, PSA announcement here is um, if you kill a raptor with a rodenticide because you have a rodent problem and you just killed that raptor, you will really have a rodent problem now because a raptor is a way more efficient rodent killer than any rodenticide. Not only that, but you're illegally killing raptors and other wildlife. So rodenticides don't just kill rodents. It's an indiscriminate killer. So just don't use it. Um, if you have a rodent problem, figure other ways out to deal with it. Encourage a raptor to come and, you know, nest nearby. Um, so yeah. Or also, okay, off soapbox. Um, I really don't like rodenticide. I've seen many, many, many raptors killed by it. It is a very unpleasant death. They literally bleed to death from the inside. Um, so if they are doing well in an urban environment, um, is that because of the higher rodenticide or rodent population? And um, maybe there isn't rodenticide present or is there because there's more prey um, you know, rodents tend to be urban, bugs may be more urban, um, little birds, you know, people that feed birds bring in little birds, although you don't cause it if you feed your birds, so continue to feed your, your wild little songbirds. You're not causing them to be killed by predators. That happens anyways. You just see it because you're there. Um, you have the opportunity to, to visualize it because um, you're looking at your bird feeder. It happens in nature, so don't, don't, think that you caused that um, or are they doing better in a rural environment because those things are a problem the rodenticide they're getting hit by car um, maybe the prey base isn't there because you know of XYZ so that's what they're trying to find out um, it'll be interesting to find out but where I started to go with this is when we first put up the nest box up here at the time um, uh, the person that I was working with with Gaming Fish was named Kurt and there was somebody from the Petrified Forest. We were at the AZFO meeting. It's an Arizona field ornithologist meeting and they told us they put a box up in the Petrified Forest which is somewhat n northern Arizona. It's more northeast Arizona, closer to New Mexico and they said they had a pair just start nesting in May. Well, that first season, I quit monitoring in April because I thought the season would be done. If they were going to nest, they would have done it already by April. So that was a huge eye opener. And, you know, we both looked at each other and was like, wow, okay. So that's something that we learned from that. So we know in northern Arizona, they nest later. And um, which kind of makes sense because it certainly, at least in Flagstaff, because at a mile and a half up, this is a different climate. It's a diff way different ecosystem than if you just drive 29 miles down the hill, which is about 3,000 feet, um, even into Sedona. So, um, yeah, that was kind of interesting. Um, now there are so many boxes and some, so many uh, projects going on. I kind of step back. I don't, I don't, I'm going to move on to a different project. And, um, I think it was this, it was 2017 in the fall. I had a graduate student that was coming to NAU and um, she went out owling with us. And um, I made the suggestion that if I was going to do a master's program, I would do it on the Kestrel. Well, she did do that. And, um, and she's got a lot of boxes up. I don't know exactly how her project is doing now. And it wasn't exactly designed how I would have done it. But there's boxes up and that's what's important. So um, if you want to put a box up, it's a good thing to do. Uh, don't get discouraged if you don't get a pair, that's okay. If you do get a pair, notify your, your game and fish department because they may be like Arizona game and fish and they may be monitoring the population in the state. 
uh, Arizona Game and Fish has made it a priority here. So that's enough about nest boxes. Um, so American kestrel, that's, that's their conservation problem.